Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. If you came across this today, you're meant to see this. Something will instantly shift for you right now in a positive way, whether it is a mental, emotional or spiritual or even on a physical level. May you rise up into a new state, my friend. This is a generous message for anyone who's in a situation right now that is studying how to raise your energy, like how to stay on one level higher energy than you're used to be. So it's a constant elevation, right? Constantly leveling up to the next level. And there are certain steps that can help us to rise up, to attract more miracles into our lives, to stay on 1% higher level every single day. Sure, sometimes it feels like we fall down, we make 10 steps backwards, and it's okay. But then we also recognize, okay, it's something that disturbed me. It's something that I'm not clear about. It's something that makes me conf confused. It's a source of confusion. So it leads us deeper into a certain type of acknowledgement, certain type of understanding, like sometimes a chaos in the relationship that only leads us deeper into what patterns we're repeating. And sometimes it's the loss of certain material possession that just leads us deeper into understanding that it's often important to let go of attachment so we recognize that we shouldn't be so controlled by everything that we have and protecting everything that we have because life is just unfolding and it's about letting things happen and focusing more on what we are giving, what we are creating, what we are producing, right? That's the greatest source of energy. It's you. It's You are the source. So the first thing that will really help you so much in your life to constantly keep leveling up is to say thanks for lessons and opportunities. And I'm sure you've heard this before and you're like, yeah, it's nothing new. And it is nothing new, but it's a reminder that can serve us so much every single day if we just keep reminding ourselves that it's all a lesson. There are so many opportunities that we may be missing because we are complaining or we are gossiping or we are trying to control things or we are ignoring our own inspiration or we are ignoring our own intuitive insights that are coming to us. And as soon as we start saying thanks to these realizations, thanks to the lessons, even though we don't understand them yet, something may be falling apart in your life and you don't understand why it is happening. It's unfolding the lesson. It's like you would be writing a story where you don't know how the story will end. That's how a lesson often looks like. You don't really know what it is until you find out what it is. And it's like unfolding of a certain process that will make sense later in life. So say thanks to it. Say thanks for its unfolding and say thanks for the opportunities. Some are finding you right now, some will find you in the future. When you say thanks to them, you're acting as they are already present and therefore they will appear in your life. You never know when, but try to learn to be surprised. Like don't wait them, don't expect them, but just act as they're constantly appearing in your life like constant attitude of gratitude. I know you lose it many times, but it's a reminder to find it, to find the gratitude. You see, we were trained to think that something needs to happen in order to be grateful, in order to be happier, in order to be excited. As same as something needs to happen in order to be sad or miserable. But if we spend too much time being sad and too little time being happy or grateful, the state of sadness becomes a habit and it eventually becomes our nature. And therefore we forget that we don't need things to be grateful or to be happy. We need to awaken a state of gratitude and happiness and joy. And when we learn to train these states, we actually train ourselves to become a new version of ourselves that is happier, that is more grateful. And then this new state can become a habit if we practice it, like we become who we are practicing to be. So when you're practicing a new emotional state, it becomes more natural to you, right? The second reminder is to laugh out loud. 
laughter is a natural form of healing. So every time you laugh, every time you find something that is worthy of laughter, it's, it can be a joyful conversation, sometimes it can be a good movie, sometimes it may be a joke, sometimes it may be your own problems. Laugh at them, laugh at yourself for making mistakes, laugh at yourself for doing stupid things because you just didn't knew better. Maybe right now you know better, right? <laughs> Maybe right now you're wiser and you could laugh at yourself for doing what you've done instead of being so hard and tough on yourself, like, oh, why I've done this, oh, I'm so stupid, I'm so dumb, and so on. Laugh at yourself because you did mistakes and it's, you know, what can you do now? <laughs> what can you do now? You can laugh and it will help you so much to raise your energy because laughter releases so much of this toxic chemistry from your body and suddenly you just feel more clear, you just feel more grounded and you just feel that this all these problems and everything you're moving through, it's so small compared to how big you are on a soul level, on an energy level. You're, you're everything and you've defined yourself by something little and you don't need to stay defined by this little piece of sadness or whatever you may feel because you're so much more and laughter will introduce you to much more because you will notice well it's something you haven't maybe felt for a long time and laughter will awaken it so laugh out loud always find reasons to laugh it's so powerful the third reminder that will help you to raise yourself up is to do something you really love to do every single day. And again, it sounds like, yeah, I've heard this before, but are you truly doing that? Because people who are doing what they love to do every single day, they just love life, right? And if you don't love life right now, it's because you're not doing enough of what you love to do. But of course, <laughs> when you find something you love to do, also you will feel a sense of fear for it. Maybe what people will say, or maybe what if I fail at it or whatever it is. But know that your instinct is always more powerful than your intellect. Don't follow your intellect when it comes to, to something you love to do. Love is it's a feeling, it's not an intellectual concept, it's a feeling, so follow that feeling. Like, I, I can only tell you when I've started painting, I was like, what my friends will say, I, I'm coming from extreme sports, so before I was painting, it was 12 years of, of sports for me. I was practicing, competing, doing it. And suddenly I've started painting and a part of me was like, oh, it's something, you know, gentle. And I was like, what people will say? Now I'm doing that. And then so many friends came to me and they were like admiring what I'm doing. So I've noticed, well, our minds are always messing up with ourselves because we are judging ourselves. We have this certain type of negative judgments towards ourselves. That's why instinct is so much more powerful because it is navigating you towards what you really want to do, what you really resonate with. So trust that instinct that you feel that is guiding you deeper into what you love to do. When you find something you love to do, you will notice that also when you're not doing it, you're, you have something to look up for, you have something to dream about, you have something to brainstorm about, to, to build. And, and you know, it may be a side project, but you never know in what kind of big thing it can turn out if you keep doing it. So you will notice you will become much more enthusiastic, infused with something higher than your present state and that's what starts raising you up, right? You stop looking onto so many things that are lowering you down, you kind of let go of all the anchors and you become more aware of this idea that is kind of compounding in your mind about the thing you could build with what you love to do and that's something really powerful. It shifts you from being in a reactive state into going into a creative state, that's so powerful and that's so admiring about you every time you're doing it. Then the next reminder is to feed your spirit with more of this positive energy. 
which doesn't say ignore the negative energy. It just says feed up with more positive energy, whatever can provide you that. I know nature for me provides that. Sun provides that. Oh, it's so powerful. Just today in the morning I went for a run and it was a beautiful sunrise and it just, you know, feeds you up. Then good food, good nutrition provides you a lot of this. And sometimes it's, you know, a book that we read or a poetry that we read or it may be a short story. You know, stories can be so powerful because it they give us a new perspective. So what I love to do often is that in the morning when I finish my run or after my morning meditation, I, I grab a random book, uh, s some books uh, that I've read before and I love them. And I just randomly open them and I read a chapter or something like that just to get some insights or to get a new perspective or to get some new words. You know, sometimes we feel something that we don't know how to explain and we need new words to articulate what we feel. And it can be so powerful often to give us a new perspective that will awaken a lot of new positive energy within us. It, it can be very powerful. And sometimes it may be an artwork, you know, if you really make your home a, a pleasant place to be in, like put some arts on the wall, put some quotes on the wall, make it a place where you really rejuvenate. That's how you fit up with more of this good energy. And it will just help you to stay in that elevated state until it becomes your new nature. Then the next reminder is to expect miracles. And maybe for some of you it sounds like, yeah, whatever. But you see, you're always expecting something. None of us is so wise and so evolved that we're just living without any expectation, that we're just deeply grounded and, and let's say so conscious that we just allow life to bring us what we need the most. We still have these unconscious expectations for something. So when you pay more attention, you notice that most of the time you're expecting a problem, you're expecting a failure, you're expecting a mistake, you're expecting something bad to happen. So as long as you're expecting something, maybe start expecting miracles. Start expecting that something unexpectedly good will happen today. You can make a mantra for yourself. I expect the unexpected miracles today. I expect the unexpected miracles. So it's more of a mystical statement because as long as we are trying to expect something, let's expect the unexpected. Let's expect the positive surprises. So they can come to us from unknown places, from unknown people, from unknown things that can surprise us in a positive way. Just creates a new state of being within us. And every time we get surprised, also make sure to say thanks to it. So you kind of give a sign to your guides, to the universe that you've noticed it. So it can bring more of it. It just makes this connection stronger. And suddenly you may start noticing more of this unexpected miracles that are taking place in your life. It may be a very, very interesting thing. Then the next reminder is to forgive yourself and trust yourself. Forgive yourself and trust yourself. This one is very interesting because you're still holding on to something that happened in the past and you may be saying like, I've forgiven but I can't forget, which just says, well, I haven't forgiven because it was very painful or it was very hard or or it was just something, something unacceptable. But forgiveness says that um, it happened and you can't do anything about it. So the only thing you can truly do is to let go, is to let go. And people are making this letting go so complicated. Letting go says, well, accept that it happened, accept that it taught you something, accept the idea that some people are mean, some people are hurt, some people are living in pain, accept that. It's just the nature of humanity. But then also accept the idea that 
you don't need to feel that pain anymore. If you start to build a relationship with this hurtful part of you, something will release. Something will release. And often you just need to be present with yourself. You see, the pain is often causing you to avoid it, to kind of escape from it. And you may be using all kinds of coping mechanisms like overdoing sports, overdoing alcohol, overdoing drugs, overdoing social media or whatever, just to escape from your own pain. But integration of higher knowledge means that you dive into this pain. And from this painful state, you develop new behaviors. Like every time you feel a need to escape, you recognize what could you do? Could you go into a nature for a walk? And could you start saying kinder words to yourself when you feel it? Like, what would you say to your friend when your friend would be feeling what you're feeling? That's the, that's the process of forgiveness, right? Forgiveness is a word, but the act of it is a process of kindness. It's a process of compassion. It's a, it's a process of acceptance and change. Acceptance needs to lead into change. And change is what takes place every time you decide to become wiser, right? And that leads into trust, trusting yourself, trusting that you can be better, trusting that you can be kinder towards yourself, trusting that you are a miracle, trusting that you can do whatever you're deciding to do, even though you may feel afraid, like what people will say, you may be afraid of judgments of others, just because so many times in the past people will, were laughing at your whatever happened. Trust that if you feel on that deep level that you want to do it, do it. Do it and do it and do it and see where it will take you. That is trust. Trust means that you believe into a possibility even though you don't have any evidence, any reason why you should to believe. You have inner knowing and that's enough. That is trust, right? Then another reminder is to tell someone else how amazing they are. You know, when you give a support to someone else, you feel supported. Isn't that so? When you elevate someone else, you feel elevated. The purpose of all relationships is not how, what we'll get from them. It's what we give in them. Giving is making a connection in any kind of a relationship. In business relationships, in personal relationships in deeper relationships, in family relationships. It's what we give, right? Giving makes a connection. And when we give, we feel empowered. When we give, we feel more loving. When we give, we feel more connected. The problem is when we just expect something from others. And usually it's because our cup of life is empty. And when our cup of life is empty, we need to find a way to fill it up. Like with activities and self-care and self-love and so on. Meditation, so on. Spirituality and so on. So we learn to fill up our own cups of life. But know that when you help others, you will feel that you've done something good for yourself as well. When you support others, you will feel supported. So tell someone else how amazing they are. It may be a stranger. Tell them how amazing they are. And the last reminder I want to give you is to respect your energy. Respect your vibe. So it means you have a very unique energy pattern. No one else has the one that you have. That's why it's manifested itself in a unique body, in a unique mind, in a unique emotional system. Respect it. Because when you pay more, more attention to your own strengths, to your own qualities, to your own hurts, you will start to see that there's something kind of beginning to reveal to yourself. You will notice that there are deep urges, like deep callings, that are calling you onto your own path, which means at some point you decide to stop following others 
and start leading yourself. Albert Einstein once said that at some point it's a time to stop reading books from others and start writing your own. Which means that at some point you come to the realization that you recognize, well, you are a unique being here. And at some point you need to decide to walk your own path, to find your own truth, to go on a quest and finding yourself, to recognize what is true that uniqueness of yourself. And that leads to respecting your own energy. Well, sometimes people will not notice your worth. Make, make sure you notice it. Make sure that you know that you are valuable. If life brought you here, it means that you are valuable enough for life to bring you here, right? If nobody else appreciates what you've done, make sure that you know why you've done it. If you've done it from your heart, respect that decision. Maybe people haven't noticed that, but deep inside you haven't done it because other people should notice it. You've done it because of your heart. You've done it because deep inside you felt that that is right. That's something you should respect about yourself. It's a deep feeling. Remember what I said before. Your instinct may be much more powerful than your intellect. Many times, because of your unique energy imprint, you do things out of an instinct that are really good things, really heartful things. And then your intellect comes in and starts explaining and judging what you've done and reflecting out of this fearful state. Don't trust that. Respect your nature. Respect your energy. And also when it comes to respecting your energy, it comes to knowing your nature. Like what makes you feel the most natural, the most alive. Like to me, it took me a long time to understand that. But more I was following what I really love to do and and doing what I'm passionate about, more I've started noticing that my nature really is creativity. My nature really is this heartful expression. When I'm doing that, I just feel I just feel like this is me. So that's how I've started respecting my energy. And more I was doing it, more I've noticed that all these fearful thoughts and this self-criticism and so on, is losing its grip, losing its power. So more I was doing it, more I was becoming natural. And that is a path towards authenticity, isn't it? It's not like deciding today I will do something authentic. It's more like deciding I will respect myself to such a degree that I will try to do less of what is not authentic. And eventually I will become authentic, right? It's really not just a decision today and from today on I will be completely authentic because it's unfamiliar. You're familiar with what you've been doing until now. And to be completely natural and authentic is so unfamiliar that you can't just embody that. But if you say to yourself, I will be doing less of what feels unauthentic, it will lead you into authenticity. It will lead you into uniqueness, into finding your own unique imprint that is already within you but you've been so hypnotized and so programmed and so brainwashed and heartwashed to forget about how beautiful it is and it's nothing big sometimes we think that in order to be authentic and in order to be truthful you need to do something big like you you need to help millions of people well actually it's not true. It's just doing what feels right. And sometimes it's just a gentle smile to someone. Sometimes it's a beautiful word to someone. Sometimes it's a hug. You know, a stranger remembered you because maybe you were the only one that did something kind to him or her. That's what your nature does. Because nature supports nature, right? It means that it looks for sustainability and sustainability comes from cooperation. It comes from collabor collaboration. It comes from supporting one another. That's what nature supports. That's why from your heart, you always feel like you want to do something like that. So, like I said, 
don't trust so much to your fears and to your self-criticism and so on. But always ask yourself from that deep level, like, what is the right thing to do right now? Where I feel more drawn to right at this moment? And trust yourself more than you trust anything else. Because deep inside, you already know what you have to do. You already know what is right. You already know where you belong. And you already know that there's always a tribe of people that will accept you. And you will meet them when you will start accepting more of yourself, respecting yourself. Sometimes when we are hurt, meeting hurt people is what's the most familiar to us. So we always feel attracted to people that later hurt us. Just because healthy people are so unfamiliar to us. It's so unfamiliar to know what, what it is, a healthy relationship. It's so unfamiliar that we don't even know how to look for them. So the best way to become more familiar with a healthy relationship is to build one with yourself. To develop a healthy relationship with yourself, like what it is or what it means to be a good listener, what it means to be a good friend, what it means to be someone who's nurturing you with some activity, with some good nutrition, with a good quality of sleep, with nice words, with honest and truthful words, with creativity, with compassion, with kindness, right? Become a good friend to yourself. So you develop this pattern recognition of what it means to be healthy. So then when you walk into the world, you start noticing that there's actually many healthy people. There's many healthy relationships and you belong to them. So my friends, I hope you found something valuable today that can help you to stay on that higher energy level. I hope you've enjoyed in today's painting as well. To anyone who would like to get a print of it, go and check out our site attractpassion.com where you can find all of my art, prints of my art in different sizes. And to anyone who would love to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm offering coaching sessions. So you can book a calling on the link in the description. So check it out. And my friends, till next time, one love.